Oh yeah, look, fuck. Oh, I just closed the book. I'm a fraud. What page is it on? It's on page 70. Yeah, Do you want to know what monks are on? Uh, monks going to be significantly after 80. 82. 74, I believe. Oh, damn. Okay, cool. Let's see. Place, place your bets. I'm going to say 76. You're going to say 76? 76. It's 74. Suck my fat cock. You fu- <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what page every single character is on in this book. Give me Paladin. Do you know what Paladin is? Uh, Paladin's going to be closer to 80 for sure. I'm going to say 79. You're going to say 79? Actually, no. 70, 76. You're wrong. It's 82. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? Monk? Monk's a big one. Oh, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, they got a full, like... Math is hard. They got a full like six pages for them. I guess so, cause like yeah, I get you know like way of way of the open palm is like six pages by itself. Well, like way way of the four elements is there's a whole page just for the spells you get. I'm gonna adjust my mic. I hope oh, that didn't end right. up too bad. Nah, probably won't. Probably not. All right, flippy flippy. Back to fighter. The purpose of this uh so podcast. Welcome. All that's uh, that, that was a nice little minute, 30 second intro. Uh, Hello, everybody. Welcome to PvP Masterclass. Where the mo- the true monsters are the friends we make along the way. You're goddamn right. I'm Jacob, and that's Cole. Hello. And we're starting a new series where we are going to be indulging in a little bit of PvP. I, I don't think that this is going to be... Um, like we're going to do, we're gonna do each class, essentially, is what it boils down class. to. Uh, I I don't know how frequent the uploads are going to be. If you guys like them, we'll we'll do up, them again. We'll, we'll, we'll upload see. it quick. If not, yeah. we'll uh, we'll kind of this is going to be kind of like a secondary fun thing. Yeah. So basically, me and Cole, we love murdering each other in games. It's like I think especially, we mentioned it, especially D and D. Yeah. Like the moment one of us makes a new character, the first we thing do, is yeah, we fight. First thing is we sit down. We say, all right, who yeah. would win? And PvP happens quite a bit. Most of our most of our party is okay with it. Yeah. And yeah. it's something we really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, both members of the party should be consenting and kind of understand that, yes. hey, a fight's going on. And, and Don't I, just haul up and murder your buddy in his sleep. Yeah. However, PvP, in certain circumstances, when both players are cool with it, is super awesome. Oh, it, it can be really fun. The, the thing I think that's the tipping point is... Uh, how the party split? Yeah. If there if there is a split, like a civil war Marvel kind of thing, where um, one character and another character are fighting, and then the rest of the group is split between them. Yeah. I think that is where it gets a little iffy when you bring in the other members yeah. of the group. I think I think the difference is a lot of people use PvP sort of as a cudgel because they don't like somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So instead of fighting yes. for character reasons or fighting yeah. because you enjoy it, in the, in the they're story, fighting it's... to kill their buddy because yes. they don't like him. They don't yes. like their character or something like that. 100%. So this series is going to be looking at every class and seeing how they stack up, mm-hmm. how they beat other classes, and how they get beat by other classes. Yeah. This, is, this has nothing to do with monsters. No. This has nothing to do with adventuring. This is raw mono a mono action yeah and so we're starting with arguably the simplest class in the game yeah one of if not the the fighter yeah i would i would say it would be between fighter and barbarian fighter barbarian maybe monk yeah because basically you every turn shit. what do you do you hit shit yeah i hit it and the fighter hit shit real good that's what the I fighter w- do i would fucking say so the fighter doesn't have interesting abilities really well, uh, hey, 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 that's not true. Yeah. What's their what's their what's their main ability? Action surge? I get to hit shit twice as much for a round. Yeah, but also you've got your um what are the martial archetypes? Yes. Those are pretty cool. There's some cool ones in there yeah. and you and what, with Battlemaster you get your different uh I would argue if they ever do like a re- revision of fighter, I want ducks. every type of fighter to get maneuvers. Because I think that would be cool. I've played a champion. Yeah. They're boring. Yeah. Battle masters are really fun because uh-huh. you have unique things. So let's kick this off. I'm going to say right now, in my personal opinion, if your DM does not allow feats because feats are an optional rule, you probably shouldn't play fighter. Feats are an optional Feats rule? are optional. Are you serious? They're not a requirement. I We play them with them in every campaign because they're really fun all and they our, add some flavor to your character. All of our friends have feats. I, I yeah. didn't know they were optional. They're optional. Wow. 
But the thing is, a fighter without feats is the most boring thing to play. You roll a die, you hit a guy, you roll your damage, you go to the next guy, you roll I, a die, hit yeah, him. Yeah, I guess That's so. It. Cause, but, oh, yeah, because um, that was the other one we were going to talk about later was Crossbow Expert. Yeah. Isn't that a feat? That's a feat. Damn. And yeah, Crossbow Expert, Great Weapon Master, all these abilities that really define your fighter, really make them unique. Holy shit. They're all optional. So, oh my God. if your DM allows feats, fighter is a really fun class. Yeah. And we're going to talk about, first of all, let's talk about why they're great. Yeah. For one, on paper, they're amazing. Yeah. You're starting off with a really good AC. Mm -hmm. You have some pretty good saving throws. Mm -hmm. You have good stats. You're starting off with good weapons. You have proficiency in every armor and weapon in the game. That's really nice. Yeah. Because then you can just, you can do it. You can have anything. You can have anything. What do you want? Do you want want a shield and a spear? Do you want Uh two swords? Do you want a great sword? Do you want a freaking slingshot? You can use that. But then again... Do you want to dual wield whips? I was just going to say dual wielding. Yeah. Isn't uh, dual wielding a feat? Dual wielding. Um, the dual wielding... But dual there, wielder there, is there, a feat. There is a, a... However, you can dual wield without feats. Yes. So we're going to talk as if there were game. feats. As if feats are okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll set that up for the Rule rest of this forward, series. Feats are allowed. Yes, feats are allowed. And another thing that I think is going to be really fun that I just want to set up before we really dive deep into into fighter, um, something I'm really looking forward to, uh, we will do some unearth arcana in this. We we will, in the future. And that's what I'm looking for. For this, not not like yeah. not not a lot in yeah. this kind of stuff, but like the classes that are just unearth. Maybe arcana. I would I would love to do an episode on Mystic. Oh, a hundred percent. That's we're what I'm saying, that. man. Yeah. We're, we're doing an episode. But on Mystic. for this episode. Feats are allowed and only official content. Yes. So. Yeah. The main strength of the fighter. You have good stats. You're a fighter. You yeah. fight things. The one thing that fighter in- excels in above everybody else mm-hmm. is raw single target, specifically single target damage. Fighters yeah. can output the most hurt on one guy in a round. Yes. Compared to anybody else. Oh, oh 100%. Just the amount of attacks you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure, paladins have divine smite, but that runs out. Yeah, and I mean, uh, our our last—I guess that was our last really big campaign was Western. Yeah, uh, we ran a Western campaign with just reflavoring guns to be range weapons. Yeah, uh, we essentially it it was like a low magic, low magic low fantasy Western setting, campaign. and it kind of devolved into more of a high magic kind of a thing. Yeah, a little later on, but it was Which, it was that's just how D and D goes. It kicked ass, man. It was fun. I, so but fun. Jacob's character in that was a fighter. Yes. Uh, Shane. Shane. Shane Davies. Fucking love Shane. And the fact that he... He was ridiculous. He had... <laughs> he was so gross. He was dumb. Yeah. He was not wise. However, he could easily, at like level 11... Yeah. Not even a super high level. Mm-hmm. He was doing over 100 damage a turn. Yeah. It it got... We were fighting vampires, yeah. and they'd be it'd be like two members of the party uh-huh. are dealing with one vampire, and then Shane walks over, kills one in one round, and goes, great, on to the next one. Yeah. And that's the thing about fighters. Who, who else is around? Is they kill shit, and they kill it really quick. Mm-hmm. However, that's kind of it. But, see, you could say that about literally any class on paper. I really don't think so. I you could you could no. say that about any class. No, it's, it comes down not. to how you. Let's go, World Star. Let's let's, let's argue. <laughs> let's, let's fight. Yeah. <laughs> Channels over. No, what I mean is, wizards have an incredible amount of utility. They yeah. have mobility okay. spells. They have spells mm-hmm. that can debuff. Monks have stunning strike. They have a mobility of sixty. Mm-hmm. Barbarians have a mobility of minimum forty. Mm-hmm. Fighters. They're slow. They don't really have. If you if you target their mental stats, they're screwed. Yeah. So that's the thing. They're really good at a one on one fair fight. But here's the problem with PvP: players don't fight fair. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are gonna PvP with a fighter, you got to basically you kind of got to not focus on role play mm-hmm. and build your character in a way that cuts off the weaknesses of a fighter. Yeah. Yeah, if you can isolate someone. Yeah. 
isolate them, get them in a room where they can't move around. Yeah. Anything that allows you to just simply beat the tar out of them. Yeah, you'll lock win. them down. Yeah. Don't let them move and hit them. Yeah. Yeah, that can that that's where you can get a little, little gross. Yeah. Fighters as long as they're not impeded mm-hmm. are incredible, but here's the that's the problem. They can get impeded pretty easily. They have That's why it's good to I mean, speaking out of the PvP thing for a yeah. minute. That's why it's good for you know your your parties to work together. Yeah. In the way that yeah, the fighter is going to really focus down that guy this turn. Yeah. Uh so maybe me is the sorcerer, or the wizard. I'm going to kind of you'll take shit out shit over here. You take out the minis, Barbarian's the little guys. going to be over there. Yeah. Like, you know, we're going to we're going to work out the strats. Yeah, you work on the potatoes. The yeah. fighter's got the meat. Yeah. Like he's got the big baddie. Yeah, They're I keep him out of your way. Yeah. yeah. And oh no, the big baddie is targeting him with a wisdom save attack. Mm-hmm. Maybe you give him a little counter spell. Maybe mm-hmm. you keep your fighter safe yeah. because he'll keep you alive by killing the things. Yeah. The the big baddie won't be coming after you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That that makes sense. So yeah, the biggest strength of the fighter, they hit hard and they hit a lot. Yep. That's what they do. And if you let your opponent set up, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, that's, I mean, when we, when we duel in that campaign, my character was named Charlie. Yes. And he was a Hexblade Warlock. Hexblade Warlock. And so much fun. Uh, (laughs) Fairly similar to Shane in some ways, because one-on-one, he's a god. Yeah. But... As soon as you throw in a bunch of people around him, less so. It becomes a little bit more difficult. He, he's he got less multiple target abilities yeah. in, in in that way, right? Like, you have one guy in front of you that's like, sweet, I got him. Yeah. I He's mine. But, yeah, the... the when definitely, definitely part of their weakness, and I think that can be handled with different subclasses or different... Abilities that come along with a fighter. Uh, yeah, having more than one opponent. Yeah. Getting getting ganked in any way, mm-hmm. fighters are pretty much unable to split their damage unless they're separating out their attacks. Yeah. They don't have multi-attack abilities. Mm-hmm. The closest you have is Eldritch Knights give you some magic options. Mm-hmm. And Battle Masters give you... Uh, like the cleave is one of the maneuvers you can get. Okay. And However, that, that affects like two spaces. That affects or two spaces. Okay. However, compare that to a wizard's fireball. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. That's literally comparing a missile to a sword. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Yeah, fighters don't get the missile. No, which is their pretty severe weakness. Yeah, fair enough. So like, wizards have a spell for every system. Yeah. Every every encounter, wizard's like, all right, I've got fireball, mm-hmm. I've got haste, I've got teleport, yeah, I've got misty step, I have something I can use to beat this outcome. Yeah, paladins have the abilities of a fighter, but they mm-hmm. also have healing, yeah, and they also have really amazing saves because they get to add their charisma to every oh, save. Oh, right. So that's what I mean by saying fighters have a lack of utility. Yeah, all the other classes have other options besides I hit the guy until he's dead. Yeah. Okay. Barbarian, you have rage. Yeah. Which gives you resistance to damage. Yeah. So not only are they also doing a pretty decent amount of damage, mm-hmm. they also are able to take a lot, which fighters can't take as much. And same as paladins. Paladins can heal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely fighters don't seem as tanky. Fighters are not the tankiest. But they still get, what are they, D8? The D10. D10. Yeah, and so they, like, get, they get second wind, which so is like, a one-off healing ability. Not super squishy. They're not super squishy, but they're definitely not going to be the hardcore tank that a paladin is mm. or a barbarian yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So with the fighter, mm-hmm. the way I have seen to kill your party mm-hmm. is, for one, trick them into a one-on-one fight. Yeah. That would do it. Shane did that all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whenever he's like, oh, I, I don't know if I can beat this guy, just convince them to 
handicap themselves, mm -hmm. which is a really funny way of saying, you know, that's how you play a fighter. But yeah, it kind of is. That, yeah. And you cannot be merciful as a fighter. Yeah. The don't, moment that a counter don't starts, back. you probably have a pretty good initiative if you're a fighter. Mm -hmm. It's at least respectable. But, like, don't hold back. Don't hold back. I, I specifically remember, uh, if I can interrupt and Go ahead. tell a quick little anecdote. Yes. Um, one night we were sitting there after people were starting to leave after uh, after a decently long session. Mm -hmm. And we decided to 1v1. Yeah. Uh, Charlie versus Shane, which we've done a few times. A number of times, yeah. Um, we essentially found that it kind of came down to who went first. It's yeah. Who rolled initiative first? Because at that point, if I could hex him before he hit me, uh, even if he did manage to hit me, there was a fifty percent chance that he flat out missed. Yeah, that's why your ability you is went hex for, Yeah, and th and that's like I think it's fourteenth level, which is a real good ability. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, as a as a fighter though, when when Shane went first, I remember. I would be standing there, you would walk up to me, action surge, and I wouldn't make it through the turn. Yeah. Because at level, we were, we were like level 14, so he had a, yeah. he had three attacks, mm -hmm. a bonus action attack, and yeah. action surge gave him another three. So that's seven attacks coming at you. Yes. And and you were using your maneuvers real well. Yeah. So he he would be able to just absolutely annihilate someone's health bar. Yeah. And... and yeah, I mean, you, if you can, if you get him into a one v one, that's and, how fighters roll, man. And, and and like you said, you have decent initiative. They're essentially fucked. Yeah. So to sum up, how to kill your party with a fighter? Pick your battles mm -hmm. and end them quickly. Yes. Do not dilly dally. Don't fighters just sit are a nova. They hit really hard in the first couple rounds, mm -hmm. and then they kind of peter out a little bit after that. Yeah. So kill them quick. Fuck them up. Move on. Yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? How to kill a fighter. Now we're going to talk about how to kill a fighter. Yes. And the answer is every other method. Mm -hmm. So fighters. Literally every. If we're going to look at, I'm going to look at my little book here. Yeah. Fighters have a respectable AC. Mm -hmm. Good. And they have a proficiency in strength and constitution saves. Yes. Which kind of aren't that great. Constitution is nice for resisting poisons, and yeah. strength is good for resisting other strength checks. Yeah. So as long as you don't try to beat a fighter in his own game, you're going to win. Yeah, if you're not trying to push him over. Yeah. Or if you're not... So you know. pretty much every magic user that knows the fighter's ready to go could end the fight near immediately. Yeah. With any sort of mind control spell, any sort of enchantment or hallucination, mm -hmm. uh one that's really obvious is feeble mind just we were the guy. talking about that last night we were talking about feeble oh, mind wow because we did a little duel last night yeah we did it was the first time we'd played in and i two months yep and oh i popped God. feeble mind on his warlock which yeah. dropped his charisma to one yeah and and by the way that was charlie yeah and and charlie at that point was uh, on level 20 level 20 with boons with immortality boons immortality and, and i had a 22 in charisma my to hit is stupid. Yeah. And yeah, you, you use feeble mind. Yeah. My charisma went to one. My what was it was intelligence as well? Intelligence went to one. You can't use magic items. You can't like Yeah. So You're fucked. And not even just enchanting the fighter, like summon demon. Mm -hmm. Give them another target to deal with. Summon anything. Yeah, literally it, yeah, and that's the thing. It doesn't have to be a big yeah. big dick badass monster. Summon something small, and that'll give you a minute to get some damage. All you need to do to beat a fighter is reduce their combat effectiveness with debuffs. Yep. Hold Person is an amazing one. It's level two. Oh, God. Hold Person, yeah. Hold Person will absolutely annihilate a fighter mm -hmm. because, for one, it's wisdom save. Yeah. They true. don't have great wisdom. True. Or anything that divides their attention. Yeah. So summoning a monster... Even something like Phantasmal Force. Just get them focused on mm -hmm. something else so you can kill them. Mm -hmm. And focus on their decks, their wisdom, their intelligence, and charisma. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Another fun one we did was Banishment. 
Oh my god. You banish them to another plane for a minute where yep. they're incapacitated. And in that time, you just prepare yeah. a giant explosion trap yeah. for when they come back. And and that would do it. Because, yeah, I mean, lo- uh, decently low charisma yeah. save against someone with even a, a like a warlock. Yeah. Or, uh, I mean, a, at least a, a cleric. I think cleric is good banishment. So I think that's why I want to start with fighter is because it's really easy to focus their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Their strengths, they kill really quickly. Their weaknesses, everything else. Yeah. No, that... It, but the, again, that's the thing. The thing is, their strength is really it's good. It's so good. They have, they have one tool, it's, and that tool is as sharp as a goddamn surgeon's tool. It's so good. It's so good. However, once you get past that one tool, yeah, that's just they're done. Of, yeah, that's that... Yeah, that's fair, but but then I would also argue that's where that's where your role play, your the way you do things, yeah. your, your subclass, what weapons you use, your feats, your race, everything. That's where that shit comes. In. Yeah, and, and and that's the I think that's the thing. I mean, we watch a, a fair bit of D and D content on YouTube. Oh, for sure. And and I think that's one of the things that bugs me the most. We were talking about this. A while ago, I think. I don't know if it was on an episode or not. Um, I think you made the joke that a uh, human fighter isn't creative. Yeah. And and I know we... And, yeah, because and like that's, that's what... That's... I played my first character ever, yeah. like a lot of people who play D&D, mm-hmm. was a human fighter. And my friend... Friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend. Uh, he, not Cole, said... Human people who play humans are not creative. Yeah, and people who play fighters are not creative. Yeah. So the worst of the worst is human fighter. Right. To which there are so many ways to play literally any character. Yeah, you don't have to be. That's where you get into was... personality. That's yeah. where you get into the bonds and even just your fighting style. Mm-hmm. Like you could have you could have a duelist with a rapier who yeah. fights up close. Yeah. You could have a fighter with a longbow who's a grizzled war veteran. You could have so many different types of characters that fit into that archetype. That's mm-hmm. where you kind of get the flavor. So and all fighters do a shit ton of damage. It then comes down to how you're going to role play that. Yeah, and I, I think the other I think a good example of that too would be your point on uh trying to get who you are one V ing to Yeah. Uh, handicap themselves and fight you alone. Yeah. That's where that comes in. Because, I mean, yeah, you're not using charisma much as a fighter, but, I mean... The only time you're toss... using charisma is to convince somebody to 1v1 you. And and that's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. You know, toss a couple points in charisma, uh, if you can roleplay them that way and, oh, and, my... and be a little bit more... My first character ever? Yeah. Uh, Marcel, quote-unquote, the champion. He kept calling himself that, hoping it would catch on. He Did was it? he was a gladiator, uh-huh. and his whole thing was every time we walked to a big baddie, the big baddie <laughs> would be like, "You feeble creature with your tiny knives, you think you can handle me?" And Marcel would go like, "Come on, fight me! Let's go! Prove yeah. it! Let's go!" And then they'd be dumb and challenge him to a one v one, and he'd slaughter them. Yeah, oh my <laughs> he god! He got by exclusively on his charisma and how much people hated him. <laughs> Because he always goaded everybody into a 1v1, and it always worked because one of his highest stats was charisma. Oh my god, that's so funny. He was just this narcissistic asshole who convinced everyone to fight him one-on-one. That's so good. And that's how you play fighter. Yeah, you. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's how a, you do it. That's entirely fair. Um, I, I think that kind of brings us to our last little bit we were going to talk about, which was... Uh, builds. builds. We're going to talk about some of our favorite fighter builds. Yes. Do you have one? Um, well, I mean, I think the the classic uh, would be like a, a fighter barbarian. Fighter with three levels in barbarian. Yeah. A fighter barbarian combo is disgusting. Because oh, dude, Boyd was a fighter barbarian. We had a character named Boyd who was a fighter barbarian, Holy wielded crap. two axes, and he once he popped his rage, yeah. was nigh unkillable. Yeah, I that because was, that was the first character I played. Uh, it was it was created before I started playing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was one of my NPCs. I was yeah. DMing, and Cole wanted to get in D and D into D and D, and I said, "Hey, 
I got this random kid named Boyd. Yeah. You want to play him? Yeah, fuck and yeah. he's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. And it was amazing. It was so good. He was he was real cool. I love Boyd. But yeah, being a fighter and a barbarian, especially later, um, I think it's just a really interesting story. Yeah. We ended up having that campaign, but I'll, I'll let you tell that yeah. in a bit. Um, fighter and barbarian was pretty gross. Like, you, well, pop, your, you pop your rage, yeah. and then you just hit so goddamn hard yeah. and you hit so goddamn much your damage is already so high mm-hmm. but the fact of combining that little bit of barbarian yeah. gives you the survivability you need to keep laying on the damage yep. if it becomes a competition of numbers mm-hmm. fighter barbarian wins yeah if it's who can bring down who first and we're not talking about like debuff spells or mind control spells or any mm-hmm. of that fighter barbarian wins yes that's it 100%. You, no contest it's done mm-hmm and Any, anyone toe to toe with a fighter barbarian, you're, you're yeah, you're fucked. Three levels barbarian, get freaking bear totem. Oh, you win. It's done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that's the other thing. Bear, uh, Boyd was bear totem. Boyd was yeah, bear totem. Yeah, uh, that one is seen as another one of the like really basic bitch uh, entry. Oh, it's it's the most simp cheesy little ability. It's because so good. It's so good. Bear totem at level three gives you half damage. You take half damage against all damage sources except for psychic damage, yep. which is one of the rarest damage types in the game. Only when raging, though, right? Only when raging. Yeah. However, but raging is a bonus action. You should be raging. So round one, <laughs> you pop rage, yeah. and then you kill everything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that... Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. So now let's look at another one of mine, and this is did the you, most... Did you want to talk about what happened to Boyd, though? Is like a little Which anecdote? part about Boyd? The end. The end? Yeah. Oh, where he becomes a god? Yeah, where he becomes the end. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That character was very interesting. He got insane. Well, that was before I really understood balance. Yeah. So when I... (laughs) I let Cole become a god... And not only to did be I... fair, the other members of the party argued for me become a, for me to become a god. Yeah, because you were the most like pure of heart or something. No, it was I was the most middle lane. You were the most middle lane. Everyone had their own. Everyone had agendas. extremes. Yeah. So here's what I did, thinking like, oh, he's a god. I should probably make him a little strong. I gave him forty levels. Yeah, twenty, 20 in fighter <laughs> and twenty in barbarian. <laughs> It was fucking disgusting. It was so gross. Well, you know, you were a god. It kind of had to work. Yeah. Yeah. It it was like, yeah. So it definitely. Was, it was hilarious. If you want to round out your fighter, <laughs> get a little goosh and barbarian. A little goosh. A little goosh. Yeah. Another thing, if your DM allows feats and uh-huh. you want to be gross, yeah. you need two feats and that's it. Okay. What are the two? Sharpshooter. Yeah. And what's the other one? Do you know? Is it crossbow expert? It's probably fucking crossbow it's expert. Probably. A dex fighter with sharpshooter and crossbow expert is one of the grossest things. What are what do the both of them do? Sharpshooter, you ignore cover. Okay. You do not get disadvantage at long range with okay. any range weapon. And you can take a minus five on your aim to add a plus ten to your damage. Yes. Okay. Which isn't that big a deal. Most characters, especially if you're fighting like a squishy wizard, mm-hmm. they're gonna have like 10 to 14 AC. Yeah. Your to hit will be 10 to 14. Yeah. Let alone the dice roll. So taking that little minus. Yeah. And crossbow expert, you ignore loading, so you can fire with a crossbow as many times as you want a yes. turn. Yes, okay, yeah. You that's... don't have disadvantage if you're within 5 feet, mm-hmm. meaning you can fight with a ranged weapon as effectively as a melee weapon if you're at, up close. At 5 feet. And if you're attacking with a weapon, uh-huh. or I think it's a crossbow, you can attack with a hand crossbow in your hand. Okay. So as long as you're holding a hand crossbow, yes. you can fire it as a bonus action. Jesus. Meaning, if you're holding one hand crossbow, mm-hmm. at level 20 with action surge, you can make nine attacks. Yeah. At level 11, you can make seven attacks That's with action surge. Gross. It's disgusting. Plus, because you have sharpshooter, that hand crossbow is doing as much damage or more as a great sword. <laughs> And, here's my favorite part, uh, it removes one of the biggest weaknesses of fighter, which is your lack of mobility. Yeah. Who cares that you can move 30 feet when you can shoot the guy who's 100 feet away? And you yeah. ignore cover. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that, so, that yeah. would do it. If you want to be, um, be a Chad power gamer, mm-hmm. get those. Yeah. Also, fighters get two more ability score improvements than any other class. All other right. classes get five. Yes. Fighters get seven. 
meaning your stats will be higher and you're usually able to get more feats. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. So, crossbow expert sharpshooter? Uh, it's real good. The the crossbow expert thing was the thing I was going to talk about because earlier we were mentioning it was a Western campaign. Yes. Shane had a six shooter revolver. I had a six shooter revolver that I could shoot seven times. <laughs> that I could shoot seven seconds. times in six seconds. So I fired it six times, frantically reloaded it, and shot it again before the six <laughs> seconds were up. Because I had crossbow expert, and so loading wasn't a problem. So as I was shooting this freaking gun, yeah. I was putting more bullets in. That was always one really funny thing to me, is I always imagined, especially when we were dueling, yeah. Shane coming up, shooting me six times, and then he'd be like, hang on a second, Charlie. He'd turn around, and go, bang! And shoot me one more time, <laughs> yeah. just for good measure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so what, what were you, uh, second build. We were going to talk about second build. Was I? Yes. Because we talked about Fighter Barbarian. I mean, anything anything that removes the weaknesses. Another feat that's really good for fighters, mm -hmm. Shield Master. Ooh, because yeah. mm -hmm. it also makes up for your lack of durability as a fighter. Mm -hmm. Not to say that fighters are spongy. However, comparatively to a lot of other classes, they don't have the same power. Even a cleric, because clerics have healing. Yeah. Fighters don't really have any way to keep themselves in the fight for long, aside from Second Wind, yeah. which is not the best. It's max. The maximum amount of healing you can get is 30. Yeah, and I mean... It's 1d10 plus your fighter level. So one, if you're level 20, you get an extra 30 HP. And once you're at level 20, if something's doing 30 HP to you, you're probably overleveled. Yeah, you're probably going to win. Like, yeah. If it's like, oh no, I took 30 to the, damage in a round. Over, over level compared to the problem. Sorry, you I probably have overkilled. You yeah. probably already killed the thing. Yeah. Um, another one that I kind of wanted to talk about too, uh, would be a fighter warlock fighter warlock, but you would have to take more levels in warlock than you would in barbarian than a fighter. Well, no, if you like comparing the two oh, fighter barbarian, two. fighter warlock. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I should have been more clear there too. Yeah. Uh, fighter barbarian. What level would you three. go? I would probably hit five maybe, um, just just to get some invocations, mm -hmm. uh, to get some of the subclass things from from Warlock to really kind of get a few more of the benefits from over there. Because Warlock is very, very customizable. Yeah. Um, I know people who, or I've seen builds for Warlock that are solely ranged. Yeah. They're I mean, very the squishy way. and they stay 100 feet away from everybody. And fuck shit up from out there. And then I know, for example, again, Charlie is always... He has many abilities that are designed to either bring the thing he wants dead closer... Yep. Or to bring him closer to the thing he wants dead. Oh, yeah, anything that gives you more mobility... So, yeah. Is there, great. And, and, I mean, even then you get access to the Warlock spell list. Yeah. Uh, not high levels of it, but I think... Armor of Agathis? Yeah, you get Armor of Agathis. You get second level... With five? Yes. Second level spell? I think. Yeah, so I mean, even then, you're getting a little bit more... Um, you're getting a little bit more longevity with Armor of Agathis, which also ups your damage output a yeah. little bit. Um, another, you know, you, you get a little bit more of that kind of stuff. Another... I was I was pondering over what spellcaster I would put with Fighter. Mm -hmm. Cleric. Yeah. I think I would do Cleric because, for one... Clerics are able to change their spells out at a long rest, oh, so you don't yeah. have to pump in levels in order to get a huge expanded spell right. list. You can be like, oh, we're going against this. Yeah. I need to be prepared for whatever. Right. And it gives you healing, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yeah. And it gives you some really good tertiary, secondary abilities Yeah. in order to keep yourself in the fight. Yeah, depending on what uh, what subclass you went with with it. Yeah. I mean, even just the basic ones, like, what was it spiritual weapon? Yeah. You get an extra oh weapon you can God. attack with as a bonus attack? Spiritual weapon, yeah. That, in tandem, could you imagine a fighter who's beating your ass with a longsword, mm -hmm. but you're like, I got this guy, and then he's just like, nah, second longsword, flying in the air, yeah, another stabbing one. you in the face. There you go. Yeah. Have fun with that. Yeah. That would be... It's not concentration. I know. I thought it was concentration. Yeah. That is insane. Do clerics get shield of faith? I think they do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I haven't looked at my cleric. But, like, long, so. you have ways to up your health. You have yeah. ways to up your AC. Mm-hmm. You can now defend yourself slightly against other magic users. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So yeah, warlock, cleric, mm-hmm. and yeah, barbarian. It's a given. Yeah, they're. I mean, it's just kind of. Yeah. It's like you say, multi multi classing. Really, what I would say is, with any class, I wouldn't take a fighter that I would multi class in other classes. I would take other any class. class and give it two levels of fighter mm-hmm. because you get a fighting style if you're like a barbarian and you get fucking action surge yeah and that action good. surge is good for literally anybody because yeah. all it is is once per long rest on your turn you get another action that can save any class can it be used for anything or is that it can be used, be used for, for anything okay you get okay. one action to do with what you will yeah, that would be pretty good with anybody. Yeah. I could Are see Are you that. about to die? Use mm-hmm. it to take the dodge action. Mm-hmm. Or use it to cast a spell to heal yourself. Or kill the guy. Or anything. Yeah. You're a paladin. The guy's got you down on your last legs and you're mm-hmm. out of turn and you're, you're out of options. Action surge to use your lay on hands. Yeah. Now you've gained any amount of HP. You're back in the fight. Yeah. I could see that being really good. Yeah, yeah I mean, definitely fighters... Are- Actually, a pretty decent when you use them that way. Pretty decent little uh, Swiss Army knife. Yeah, fighter, and it's like fighter is such a front-loaded class. Yeah, you get second when you get action surge. Like just the first, the the first subclass ability for mm-hmm. most of the subclasses is amazing. Level three battle master, you mm-hmm. get all of your maneuvers. Level three champion, your crit range increases to nineteen and twenty. Yeah. Everyone can benefit from having a crit range of nineteen and twenty. See, I would, I would then argue, go to level three. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say, go to level two. Don't go to level one. But no, go to level, it wouldn't even be worth yeah, it. Go, to level go one. two, three, maybe five, so you get extra attack. If you're, yeah. a, if you're a cleric with extra attack, yeah, forget about it. Yeah, I mean, no, at that point, true. you're basically just a paladin. But you're a paladin with a way better spell list. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fuck paladins. Yeah, fuck paladins. If be, you're gonna play a paladin, be just, a cleric fighter. Yeah, just multi-class cleric fighter instead, and you'll probably do just as well or better. Yeah, no, that's that's entirely fair. Yeah, let's name this. Let's name this episode "Fuck Paladins." <laughs> <laughs> we'll change the name of the series to "Fuck All right. Paladins." So uh, <laughs> we've gotten a little off topic. I guess we'll I guess we'll round this out. Yeah. So, what are fighters good at? They're gonna. Just raw DPS. Killing How shit. How much damage they Killing can it out. really fast and yeah. moving on to the next. Yeah. Their weaknesses, their mobility, their saves. Being outnumbered. Being outnumbered. Yeah. They're not very good in... They're amazing in 1v1, terrible in 1v any other number. Yeah. Yeah. That would that would pretty much, yeah. That sums it up. So, in order to kill a fighter, uh, bring your friends. Always have friends. Yeah. <laughs> in order to be a fighter... Kill your friends one friend at a time. Yeah, slowly. Very slowly. Make it hurt. Use a spoon. Use a spoon. <laughs> They're proficient in it. My, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I think we should end that it there. That is gross. Hope you guys liked the first episode. Yeah. Uh, this was fun. It was fun. Ranty, I liked it. But we'll do it again. I liked it. It was Maybe it was, uh, I enjoyed it. What do you want to do next? Um... Oh fuck! My Siri activated. Goddamn I'm Siri! I'm calling Rod. No. Uh, I'd be down to do probably. I mean, personally, I'm just I'm kind of biased. I'd be down to do Warlock, you but do Warlock? we could do Monk. Let's uh, let's let's do Warlock. You do Warlock. Warlock is one I'm not super educated on. I don't think I've ever played a Warlock. Actually, that's a lie. I played one uh-huh. probably four years ago. Damn. So I might need to do some reading up. But yeah, let's definitely do Warlock. I'm down. All right, All right. Well, awesome. uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully, like, let it, let, let let us know. Yeah. Did you like this? Did yeah. you hate this? I I think we're. If you hated this, please be quiet. <laughs> it's just kind of a fun thing yeah, we've been talking about doing thing. for a while. So, yeah. um, but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I had a good time for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna go finish my rum and coke now. Hell yeah! All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good uh, night, everybody. Whatever, whatever the next episode uploaded after this ends up being. <laughs> See you guys later. See you around.